amongst all of you as, as family and friends. Um, I, am, I am truly touched by those of you that are here today, taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us as we celebrate the life of our mother and grandmother and great-grandmother. And though it's been a lot of years since some of us have seen each other, um, and names are forgotten, um, the smile and the face is always remembered, and I, and I appreciate that. Um, when you live to be 95 years old, and you uh, think about attending your funeral, you wonder how many people are going to show up. And uh, I want you to know it's, it's not the number of people. It's the quality of people that show up. And you are all quality people. You all have your own cherished memories of our great grand or our grandmother, your friend, in your lives. And it's my hope as we come, to te come together to today that we'll find peace and comfort, relief and joy as we worship together and that the promise of our Savior Jesus Christ will be fulfilled when he spoke to the twelve saying, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be troubled. As I thought about what I might say today, you know, I had two reoccurring themes that kept coming to my mind. And the first one is that I am grateful and I find it a privilege literally to stand here before you today. It is because of Verla Ford Gibson and her husband Malcolm, along with Alice Otley Hall and her husband Ira, that produced for me two wonderful parents. They are my progenitors. I am their offspring. And we together are a family. I am grateful for their sacrifice and their decisions that allow me to be here with you today as part of this great family. One of my most treasured that or one of my most valued treasures in this world is a picture of these six magnificent people standing next to each other the day that my parents were married and sealed in Idaho Falls. The Bible is family-oriented. From the very first pages of Genesis, we learn of God and his relationship with his children. Our first parents, Adam and Eve. To the very last pages of Revelation, where we read that those who overcome all things in this world shall inherit all things of God, and we shall be his sons and his daughters. Everything in between these pages, all the stories inside continue to teach us of his love and, and teaches us that we are created in his image, in the image of God, and that each of us is a beloved son and daughter of the Heavenly Father. Paul said to the anthem, for in him we live and move and have our beings. And as certain as your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by the arts of man device. God the Father is just as real to us as we as parents are to our own children. He is our spiritual progenitor, and we are his spiritual offspring. And together, we are his family, and we mean this world to him. After
after the five days of the, of the creation, he decreed in the book of Genesis, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him, male and female, created he then. And this is what I like about this. This is what comes next. It says, and God blessed them. He blessed his son Adam. He blessed his daughter Eve. With all the tender mercies of a loving father could, his creations, the one that surpassed them all, he laid aside all that was important to him in the vast universe that he had just created, and he spoke to them and let them know how important they were to him. That same love is extended to us for his work and his glory is to bring to pass the immortality and the eternal life of man. I believe we get to experience a small portion of that great love that he has for us here on this earth in our own families as God intended it to be when we come to know that the family is ordained of God and is central to his plan when we read in Psalms 127. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of the mighty one, so are the children of the earth. And I beg a little indulgence and liberty here. Happy is the man and the woman that their quiver, that their quiver full of them shall not be ashamed. And I know that as Grandma is here with us today, that she would let down a person home. And that all the things that she accomplished in her life, her family, her sons, her daughter, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, are and were the most important thing to her. I hope we take the time to reflect and ponder the significance of Grandma and Grandpa Gibson in our own lives as well as our parents. The other thing that I thought of was when you live to be 95 years of age, you see a lot of things. And over the past 95 years, the world that we live in today looked and felt and worked very differently to the one that Verna Marjorie Fuller was born into on February 14th, along with her twin sister, Verna Margaret Fuller. As a matter of documented and, and historical fact, the world has changed more since the turn of the 20th century with innovations and inventions than any other time in the history of the world. The 20th century began and with the infancy of airplanes, automobiles, the radio that dazzled with their novelty and wonder, and we ended up with spaceships, space travel, computers, cell phones, the wireless internet, and all, all these things which we now take for granted. Even with all these marvels over the past hundred years that have helped elevate the status of mankind in our living, and our own thinking, and our own way of life, never before obtained by others in the history of the world, there is one event in the history of the world that surpasses all other events and cause, to, and cause us to sort of even loftier spirits, live a more full and abundant life, and provide greater direction in this life and the one to come. This is the good news for the gospel of Jesus Christ, which allows us as God's children the opportunity to work out our salvation before Him and return to His presence when Christ taught, and this is life eternal, that they might know Thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom Thou hast sent. Because of the fall of Adam and Eve, we are subject to physical death, which is the separation of our spirit from our body, as Paul taught, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Because death must pass upon all men to fulfill the merciful plan of our great Creator, there also needs to be the power of resurrection. 
This great gift came to us through God and His Son, Jesus Christ, when we read in John chapter 16, verse 3, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth, believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Death is not the end for us, and that same sociality which exists among us here will exist among us there. Only it will be coupled with eternal glory and the promise of the Savior when he said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go there and prepare a place for you. Just as Christ was the first fruits of the resurrection, we too receive that sweet fruit when Paul wrote, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump will sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruptible, and this mortality must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass that saying which is written, which is written, Death is swallowed up in the victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to know that I know that we will have the opportunity to see Verna again. Our mother, our grandmother, because of, the because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In just a few short weeks, we'll have the opportunity to celebrate Easter. We'll celebrate the newness of life that will come to each and every one of us because of the death and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I want you to know that I know that He lives and I love him. And I know that he loves each and every one of us. And there will be a time and a place where we'll all come together and be able to celebrate our love together in the kingdom of our God and his courts. And I say this to